three, four. Hey there electricians, welcome to the Ideal Power Masters series. In this trade, like any other, every electrician has a few tricks up their sleeves that make their lives a little bit easier while on the job site. Now, these are things that you don't necessarily learn from an apprenticeship program or even from studying the code book. Now, I'm talking about that secret sauce, those insider tips and tricks of the trade that you only get from experience and a little ingenuity. And today, we're gonna share some of those tips with you. I'm here with master electrician, Greg and Licker and apprentice Emma Becker. Now you're familiar with both of them. Greg is the three-time professional champion of the Ideal Electricians National Championship. And Emma was an apprentice finalist in that same competition series. Now I know you guys had a chance to actually work side by side during this championship, which was amazingly exciting. And I know that there was a lot of lessons learned. Emma, was there anything in particular that you learned by getting the chance to work directly with Greg? Yeah, so actually, while we were in the briefing room before that round, I had the chance to talk to Greg a little bit, and I asked, hey, what advice can you give me, or what can I do to be better in this round? And Greg actually gave me some really good advice, and he said, just do everything you can to be one step better than everyone else. Just that quality of work, put in the effort, and really set yourself apart from all the competition. Well, that's some great advice, and I know we have a lot of tips to share today, so let's get started. All right. Greg, Emma, I'm really excited to learn some things today. Let's start here. What is this thing and what do you use it for? Chip, currently we got a piece of half inch conduit, but on the job site we can quickly turn this into a useful tool we call a story pull. Okay. We use it for marking out elevation on our walls for layout. It can be not just for mounting boxes, but for also we're going to drill our holes later for running either a conduit, BX, non-metallic, whatever it is that we're using on the job. Uh, I usually find one at least five foot tall because you're going to have devices usually as high as four feet that we're marking out. Usually what I start with, Emma, would be putting some tape on the top because if we drop this on the floor and pick it up the wrong way, all of a sudden all our elevations are going to be in the wrong spot. So I would just establish what the top of our pole is going to be first. Perfect. That'll give us something to hold on to while we're using it. All right. So on this job site, we are doing center of receptacles at 18 inches, we're doing center of our ADA switches at 42, and we're doing center of our standard switches at 46 inches. So let's get marks starting from the floor where this will be sitting. We'll mark 18 inches as our center line for our receptacle. We can make a mark and we'll come back and we'll get a ring all the way around it. 42 we'll do as our ADA height switches, and 48 as our standard height. Okay, let's ring. Let's get a ring all the way around those, so no matter which angle we're coming from, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Okay, now we've established our device heights. I also like on my story poles to have locations of where I'm going to drill holes for when I'm running my conduit or non-metallic, whatever it is that we're doing. Uh, in this instance, our receptacle will have a four by four box centered on there, and we'll have a six inch stub for our half inch conduit coming out. So eight inches above eight inches below will be where we'll be running our conduit from this mark. So let's get a mark each way of that mark, eight inches. All right, same thing. Let's ring those around too, just so we can always see them. All right, now that we have a working story, we can get started on our layout. Okay, here we come into our bedroom. As we come in the door, we're going to have a switch. This is not ADA, so we're going to use our higher mark. We're going to mount a switch on the left-hand side of the stud. Directly below that, we have a receptacle on that same stud. If you move over a stud, we have an outlet there for a TV. So you're able to quickly and accurately lay these out without getting your tape measure stuck underneath that bottom track or getting marks with your marker all over your uh, measuring tape every time using it over and over. So then I would like to just keep this on my card or whatever you're working off of because we'll use this day after day on this project. Greg, Emma, nice job so far. I'm excited for this one. 
One thing that homeowners always ask for are things like convenience outlets, like a, a new receptacle behind the television to keep those wires from showing, or just a new switch in the same stud cavity. Do you have a tip to make that a little easier? Oh yeah, we'll show you a couple tricks. Uh, we'll do it first with flex, fishing down out of the panel, using gravity as our friend, and then we'll, we'll add one for a TV. We'll be fishing up from a lower receptacle and adding one up high. Real common stuff. Let's see how you make it easy. All right, let's do this, Emma. All right, we already have our receptacle marked out at 22 inches. We picked that elevation only because that's where the rest of the homeowner's outlet's are already at. Make it look nice and clean. Correct, correct. So when we, have, when we have a wall like this, could be an outside wall stuffed with insulation. Sometimes people add insulation just for sound purposes even. Uh, it could be hard to get up and down that wall. A trick I like to use is jack chain. Oh wow. Just, it's pretty, pretty weighted. That's but, like a medium but, weight chain. Yeah, but yet yeah, very flexible. And it fits through our knockout opening. Awesome. So you're just using gravity of the chain to fall down. Now, how does this work in front of something like insulation? So if it was if it was unfaced insulation, this is still going to be a struggle. Okay. Beautiful, nice. All right. All right. Nice work, Emma. See if we can get that knockout out so we can get down to that. Oh yeah. Obviously, our panel is currently de-energized, or I won't be putting this metal chain in it. Uh, I'll drop the chain to you. You can try to catch it down there. See if you can, if I can make it down this cavity. Okay. All right. Now we need to. Now we need to make up our head for the flex. It's pretty hard to attach a piece of flex to the chain, and we're going to have to get this up there with the connector already on it. Being we have no access from the top side. So what I like to do before I put my connector on is grab a piece of poly line. and stick it through my connector before I put it on. So I'll just stick it through, put the connector on, and go ahead, you can tight, tighten that down. If this was an insulated wall, these screws oftentimes want to get snagged on the insulation, and you'll drag all the insulation up. So once it's tightened down, a lot of times, you have a pair of linesmen. I sure do. I'll just go ahead and clip that off. Sounds like the perfect thing to snag on something. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'd, if, if, I, if I saw it was really loose insulation, I'd maybe even put a little tape around it just so it wants to slide up that wall easier. So before we send it up the wall, our next step is we need to get this lock nut off because we're going to need that up top. If you get it up there and it's still on, you're going to be real mad at yourself. Okay, go ahead. I'll send it up to you. You have that lock nut, lock nut still? Okay, I'll let you get it on there. It's like the ceiling fan conundrum, all the different parts that have to go in the right order. In the right order, correct. Okay, she's tightening down that lock nut so we have a decent ground. And then at this point, this string serves no purpose. If we left it, it wouldn't really hurt, but I usually take either my knife or a pair of pliers and cut that off. Okay, beautiful. So now we're down to the bottom side. Same trick here. Before I put my uh, connector on, instead of using string on the bottom side, a lot of times I'll wrap it with tape. Yep. Nice work. So when you're doing a non-metallic box, Romex is flexible enough that you don't have to, uh, you can put the Romex in before you stick the box in the wall. When you have flex, there's not enough flex in it that I can put this in before I stick it in the wall. It kind of gives you almost a hand inside the wall. So this, yeah, this, this is where it gets tricky. So we'll lace the tape through the opening. I usually pull it out where it sits on it and get it up into the wall. Once it's in the wall, I can use that piece of tape that we had put Ahead, ahead time in the connector to suck it back down and into the box. Now to see if I can get my lock nut started. There it is. Okay, so same thing. Now that I'm snugged up, I'll take your uh, linesman again. I'll tighten that lock nut down. 
this one, I usually just grab a hold of it and rip it off the tape. You're all set. We already have our outlet marked out for this wall mount TV. Go ahead and trace that out and get it cut in if you would. So tell me about the strategy of when you would fish down versus up inside the stud bay. So this is the reason we're fishing up in this instance. Let's pretend that panel doesn't exist. Our only outlet to choose from is down there. And that's why they already had their TV mounted in this location so they could drop cords to it. Got it. They're now sick and tired of seeing those cords. We're gonna get them hidden by doing this. Perfect. So in essence, this Romex in the wall is gonna be our cord for the TV. You wanna test your fit before we go to fish this up? Definitely. So talk me through the strategy. What's kind of the order of operations for doing this fish? So uh, uh, on this fish, we obviously have to have a, our hole where the new receptacle is going to go. Now that we have that big hole, we're going to fish towards that hole. You know, there, there could be someone who would try to shove a fish tape down the wall and hit that little tiny opening really in the top hard of the box. That. You'll battle that all day. So in this instance, we're going to fish out of the top of the existing receptacle. And up have the big hole where you can reach. Up to this. Yeah. Okay. So, same thing, Rome, there, there could be uh, insulation in this wall, not insulation, either way, a fish tape for this distance will usually get you there. So we'll fish this up. Way to go, got it, got it, Emma. Yeah, y'all make that look really easy. <laughs> it's always this easy on the job, too. <laughs> All right, do you want me to feed or pull? Ah, uh, you can feed it down. All right. We might get hung up as we go into the box. It's a small opening there. We'll go battle that a little bit. Okay, that was easy. All right, you want to take care of splicing the bottom? I'll get this upper box in. Sounds good. All right. Mm -hmm. Nice job. So it seems like strategy matters when it comes to what type of fish you use, whether you're going up, whether you're going down, whether there's insulation in the wall, but with the right outlook, it happens a lot quicker. Yeah, and the right order. <laughs> no doubt. You, you can struggle if you do things out of order. Looks great. All right. Well, it looks like we're gonna be, what, running some wire? We what are. do you got for us? We're pulling a home run, and we're gonna show you a shortcut, a half hitching the wires on instead of stripping them all to make a head up. All right, let's see it. All right, Emma. We got two networks we're pulling. We have them already identified with one wrap, one wrap of tape, two wraps of tape. So seven conductors, if we were to strip them all, we'd get a large head. Something I like to do instead is when I'm using polyline, or if I'm not using polyline, if there was a fish tape in this home run, I would just tie a small chunk of polyline to it so I can half hitch on. Make a wrap up top. Do you have any tape I can use? I do. Okay, tape up the front of the head. I like to always leave a little tail so it's easy to come off at the end because we're not wasting any wire doing it this way. All the insulation is still on these conductors. Every time I do a half hitch, I like to do three half hitch knots. It's just a loop right over itself. When I get to the end, behind the third half hitch, a couple of wraps of tape so that string can't slide up. When we uh, pull on this string, the harder I pull on it, the tighter these knots are going to cinch down on themselves. Yeah. So the harder I pull, the harder it grabs these wires. Sure. All right. I'm going to head to the other end. Let's give it a tug. All right. Now that we've got the wire fished through, it's time to terminate the wire. So what tips do you have for terminating them to the breakers? So when I'm terminating a panel, uh, you sometimes will have a panel with 42 breakers in it, and it's the same, same, same motion over and over and over again trimming. So we have our networks numbered or labeled one wrap, two wrap. In this instance, we have four breakers. We're gonna do one wrap as the top two breakers, breaker two and four, and the two wraps as breaker six and eight. Excellent, all right, Emma, show us how it's done. All right, so let's, let's figure out uh, breaker number two first. Get that black dressed in to where you wanna cut it. Nice. Okay, at this point, most people would go and terminate that black. I would, the way I would do it would be pull those conductors back out. We have them taped together so the lengths are still the same. These breakers are about one inch tall, so one inch longer than the black, cut your red. If this was a three-phase panel, we'd have a network with the blue there also, and we'd cut the blue one inch longer than the red. 
Now, go ahead and strip them both, and when you dress them in, it's gonna look picture perfect, because we already took into consideration that breaker width. Perfect. That red just dressed itself right in. You didn't even really have to bend it because it was already cut to the right length. Yeah, keep moving. Breaker six, breaker eight. Same thing again. There we go. All right, Emma. So as you can see, it uh, was obviously a little bit quicker. In this instance, uh, like I said, if it was a three-phase breaker, it'd be that much faster or that much more time-saving. Uh, everyone has their own way of trimming. I like the way you dress your wires in. Some people like to do a real hard 90. Uh, I call this the rib cage style, and that's kind of the same technique I use. Nice work. All right, I'll show you one last quick tip, Emma. When I'm stripping wires on a looped receptacle, most guys will come up to that receptacle Get their utility knife out. Strip a small area with using their knife. And then take their strippers to it so they can terminate the receptacle. A shortcut I was taught by my foreman as a first year apprentice. Took me a while to learn, but once you learn this, you'll love it. Is if you lay your strippers down on their side, real as far down as possible. I can just use the blade of my stripper, like as my knife, strip, strip, done. Instead of flip-flopping between tools or scarring the wire too much. And then I already made the loop using my stripper, so we're ready to go. Super quick terminations. On the job site, clearly our hands get the job done, but it's also our heads that really need to be in the game too to make sure that we're efficient and that we're using the latest technology. What have you found that really helps you on that front? Oh, there's a handful of apps, Chip, that help me. Uh, there's Electrician Sidekick. It'll show you uh, conduit bending. It'll show you pipe fill, voltage drop. Uh, there's kind of a cool little uh, pictorial image where you could drag and drop conductors into a conduit and it'll show you what size of uh, wire nut connector will fit that combination of wires. Uh, there's pipe bending apps, other pipe bending apps. I have an electrician's calculator that'll do some technical stuff. I'm doing industrial work. Uh, I rely on my phone quite a bit. That's great. Well, it's a powerful tool to have in your pocket, especially when you know how to use it and to reference it. Greg, thank you for sharing uh, all this experience with us today and uh, Emma as well. Thanks so much. How was it for you? It was, it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot of new things that I'm going to be applying tomorrow. Thank you all for joining us today. Well, hope you guys will keep all of these tricks of the trade in your back pocket and that to help you become the best electrician that you can be. For more insider tips, check out all of our Power Masters videos at idealind.com slash powermasters.